Audiobooks are an excellent choice when it comes to educating oneself, as they can be listened to while driving, doing the dishes or simply taking a walk. Audiobooks are especially great when you are a slow reader like I am, since you can easily bump up the playback speed. But with that increased speed and the activities that we frequently do while listening to audiobooks, it becomes quite easy to get distracted and miss entire chapters of a book, which is not only frustrating, but also a waste of time and money. Over the last years, I listened to over 200 audiobooks and I refined my approach to listening to audiobooks. Here are my major takeaways and my approach to learning while listening. Firstly, it is paramount to realize why you do it in the first place. Do you listen for relaxation? For finding new ideas and getting inspired? Do you listen to repeat and memorize knowledge that you already learned in advance? Or do you use audiobooks to fall asleep? Finding your why is crucial as it influences how you listen. If you listen for relaxation, then you won't be as focused and attentive. If you listen for repetition, then you'll filter for content that you already know. If you use audiobooks as background noise for sleeping, then you may not focus at all. Find your why and be sure to adjust your listening style. If you want to educate yourself, then using audiobooks as an aid to fall asleep might not be the best idea. Secondly, don't expect to remember everything or even to be focused all the time. You will get distracted, you will miss passages or if it goes badly and you're listening on a very high speed, then you might miss half the book. This can be quite frustrating, but it will happen sooner or later. The key is to not beat yourself up over it. Especially in the beginning, you might think it's an utter waste of time since you've spent all that time and didn't even listen. You might feel guilty and discouraged, but this was just a temporary lapse of focus. You will encounter this occasionally. If you try to throw a ball, you will not always hit your target. And if you try to focus on a task at hand, you will also fail from time to time. Accepting this at an early point is one of the best things you can do. Next, listen for ideas, not knowledge. If you just read one book on a subject, then you should be on the lookout for novel ideas that you haven't heard before and not so much for the cold hard facts that could be part of an exam unless your goal is to memorize. Ideas are inspiring and lead to action. They also tend to stick around for a little longer. Facts usually do not. Ideas also encourage independent thinking. If you come across an idea that seems interesting or even weird, then you'll likely think about it. And by doing so, you'll not only deepen your understanding, but you'll also ingrain the idea into your head a little further. But ingraining is not enough. That's why you should definitely take notes. Write down ideas that you find interesting, but don't limit yourself to the ideas in the book. Quite often, books can spark ideas that show up connections to other subjects that are actually not related to the topic at hand. Just write everything down somewhere. Ideas last longer than facts, but eventually we will forget them too. Writing things down ensures that you have a resource to fall back on. This is not just linked to audiobooks, but in general, processing information with another step makes memorizing easier. In our case, hearing is the first step, then comes thinking about it, followed by writing it down and the next step could be writing about it or explaining the idea to someone else or even capturing the idea into an abstract painting. Each additional step wires the idea or any content for that sake to a different part of your brain, which is crucial when it comes to actual learning. Another huge tip is to listen to multiple audiobooks on the same subject. This has two major reasons. The first one is to simply reiterate the ideas or facts that you already heard, thus again making them easier to remember. But more importantly, by having multiple sources, you begin to actually understand what the topic is all about. Every author has personal biases and perspectives on a subject, which inevitably occur in the audiobook. If you just have one audiobook, then you may confuse the personal opinion of the author with the actual topic. Having multiple sources allows you to see which themes occur in all of the books, providing you an accurate understanding of the topic. Whereas a single source might just give you a very limited insight. Let's say you're interested in the philosophy of Stoicism and you just read or listened to Letters from a Stoic by Seneca. Then you will have a different understanding of Stoicism than someone who just read or listened to The Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. But if you not only go through Letters from a Stoic, the Meditations, maybe some works from Epictetus and a few more modern works on Stoicism. Then you'll uncover which aspects occur in all of these. You'll receive a deeper understanding of Stoicism 
and you'll be able to separate the unique personal perspectives of these authors from the more general foundations of Stoicism. Lastly, don't be stingy with the rewind button. Skip back if you lost focus, skip back if you heard something new and skip back if you didn't quite understand something. And if you deem a book as especially good, then be sure to revisit it from time to time. Today's video sponsor is no one. But if you're interested in some good books, then check out the video description. There you'll find an Amazon affiliate link with a comprehensive list of books that I've listened to or read throughout the last years. Finally, a huge shout out to Elizy, David Rose and Robert Kempf for supporting me on Patreon. I truly appreciate it.